And after, after tonight, I'm beating every one of y'all motherfuckers up. On me, on mothers. Clap what you heard. Oh, y'all thought shit was, this shit is not funny. Hey, no disrespect. But, uh. So, done. I'm recording. Yes, I am. I was debating on whether or not. What? Oh. I should eat this. My story begins not too long ago. I decided to use my computer skills to run a small darknet forum mainly just to share information without censorship. At first I was extreme. What? Go back. Go back. <laughs> I hope it's not what I think it is. Go back. Cause he's he's My story begins not too long ago. I decided to use my computer skills to run a small darknet forum mainly just to share information without censorship. So which that sound like the dark web, my brother. Not my brother, because you white, but that sounds like the dark web. So what you say? Are you trying to say the dark web without saying the dark web? Because either way, Igga, it's the dark web. At first, I was extremely paranoid about my site being hacked and having privacy being compromised. So I went online and began to research everything that I would need to ensure my own safety. After countless days of searching blogs, forums, and other material, I decided I was ready now. I didn't have any money, so I couldn't just buy a VPS in host site. So I decided to use my old laptop. After all, I wasn't planning on running a major website. So after setting the server up, and what I thought was literally every single thing I could do to harden it against an attack, I put the site online. Everything went great for a couple of months. Donations rolled in as the user base grew larger and larger. After around five months, the user base had gotten so big, I had to upgrade and migrate everything to a new PC, which I built just to host the forum. And from there, everything seemed perfect. The site was running smoothly, and there were no issues with the migration until one day. When I came home, I noticed the PC had frozen. I didn't think much about it. Maybe just a software bug caused it, so I rebooted it, and that's when it was clear to me that something was wrong with the PC. The PC lit up, and it beeped a few times, then shut off. So I thought to myself, okay, it's a hardware issue. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm about to eat clock two nights. No other nights. I not, I should have been clocked. At this point in time, I'm getting clocked in my own place, in my own bed. Thermostat set to 72 because it's cold outside. All right. Candles lit. I don't know how the candles got lit. But the candles were lit. And you said you built that shit without no protection whatsoever. Nothing? All right. After a few hours trying to diagnose the issue, I figured it out. And it turned out that the realm had been corrupted. I took it back to the store since it was still under warranty. The customer service rep just told me it might have just been a faulty stick. So when I got home, I replaced a stick of RAM and had the site back up running within a few hours. Everything seemed to be perfect again. I apologize to the users for the downtime. If I was the person or, or the employee at the MJV com uh, computers, I would have been like, you would have came to me. Oh, shit. Uh, you would have came to me with like, you know, your problem. And I'd be like, Hold on a second now. Before you leave that door, can I suggest something? What? Adidas protection! And everyone seemed to be happy. Fast forward a few months. 
The phone's been up and running for around a year. Well, maybe a year and a half. Now this is when everything started to get really weird. I finished work on a Friday. It was a gorgeous day in the middle of the summer. I came home and got something to eat. And I sat down in front of my PC and I noticed I had a message. Upon opening the message, I realized somewhere I messed up. I don't really know why anybody would actually target me. The message had my details from my name, address, bank details, passwords, private emails, private messages, and everything nearly from every single device I own. Shit. I freaked out and immediately took the PC offline, turned my internet off. But little did I know, this guy had done his research after a couple of hours pacing my room. I received a text message. I know everything about you. The message was sent via some type of SMS service, so there was no way to trace it. And then my phone rang. Don't talk, just listen. That's your ringtone? I don't know what's worse. That ringtone or the ringtone that the girl had in the movie Talk To Me? I know everything there is to know about you. And all I want is two Bitcoin when things get worse. I'll send you a text with the wallet details. The phone call ended just as quickly as it started. I opened my laptop up, checked my Bitcoin wallet, and there was enough left over from the donations just to pay this guy off and hope that would be the end of it. It's not. So I entered the guy's details and sent the payment. Then my phone rang again. Thank you for complying. Unfortunately, someone I know really likes you. He hung up. What? Panicking, I tried calling a number back. An automated message began to play. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. A few hours passed, and I began to think to myself, well, maybe the last call was just having fun and decided after a long day, I'd just go to bed. Sometime around 2 a.m., I was woke How do you go to sleep at... First of all, how do you go to sleep at night with no damn curtains or blinds? That's one. Two, how do you go to sleep at night, right, fully clothed? I didn't see that. Three, <laughs> how do you go to sleep with one pillow? Like, it's just, it's everything underneath the sun that I don't know how you go to sleep. But maybe, how do you go to sleep knowing that a complete stranger has... All your personal information. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't. If I could, well, only way I could sleep at night is if I had either Adidas protection or a cop right outside the um, right outside my place all day, every day, twenty five hours a day, and I'm not paying you extra. About the sound of banging at my front door, I jumped out of bed and I turned on all of my lights, grabbing a knife from the kitchen. I walked slowly toward the window and looked out. I could see someone standing by a car. When they spotted me, they got in and they drove off. I rushed to the door in hopes that I might be able to get the license plate button. But by the time I opened it, they'd already turned the corner. Clock ass. As I turned, I noticed an envelope on the floor. I, I was bracing for impact. When he said, as I turned, homeboy was right there, Jesus. Get up. Went back inside and locked the door. I closed the curtains and sat in the kitchen. I placed the envelope on the counter, stared at it for around half an hour, trying to muster up the courage to open it. Did these guys really come to my home? I thought to myself. After that 30 minutes was up, I decided enough was enough. I opened up the envelope and pictures fell out onto the counter. They were of me sleeping. What would you do at that point? I know what I would do, but what would y'all what would y'all have done? That's crazy. That sucks. These guys had not only been outside my house, they'd been inside while I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> These guys was not only outside my house. They was inside when I was sleeping. And they was inside. Of 
me. <laughs> images had been edited. Strange love hearts had been added next to me. So now I was sufficiently freaked out. Really? That, I, I didn't go back to sleep. And when the sun broke darkness, I decided to head to the police station and tell them everything. I hadn't broke any laws, so I hoped they would just help me. At least after hours of explaining everything to them, they told me there was nothing they could do. Tough! At this point, I had never felt so alone in the world and helpless. I was scared of what this guy was planning. I didn't have the foggiest idea of what I was supposed to do or expect, so I decided to wipe everything off my laptop, off my PC, and my phone. I picked up everything that I needed, stuffed it all into a bag, and decided to leave. Where are you going? I had a couple of friends that I knew I could rely on, so I called up my buddy Marcus. And Don't you ever, ever, ever go to somebody named Marcus because you run away from who clutch it. Don't you do that shit. Please don't, because I guarantee you they going to look at your ass like you crazy. And they're going to tell you to turn your ass back around or you're not welcome here. Our friendship is done. Because I told you, the first day we met, hi, my name is Marcus. Just like I was, I was aggressive too, but I was like, hi, my name is Marcus. I like to watch movies. And I like to cook. Let him cook. Also, if you find yourself in a clutch of ass situation, do not come to me. Don't you don't don't call me. Don't text me. Damn sure don't come to my house. Or while work. Anything. Don't don't do it. Cause I might cluck your ass up. Our friendship will be done. And who's to say that the friends that you're going to is not a cahoots with the hack shits? We met, had a few beers, and I explained everything to him. He offered me a place to stay, and I hoped that would be the end of it. I was definitely wrong. A few days later, it happened again. There's a wow, wow. All right, now I'm starting to think it's one of your friends. Oh, it could be Marcus. But at that point, it's, his name is not Marcus, it's Arcus. To the door, first thing in the morning. Marcus and I both went out to find another envelope on the floor. Same thing. Pictures of me. <laughs> we, were, we both, look, we both look, looking at the envelope. We both look up. I would have, I would have socked your ass. Leaving, but these were in Marcus's house. I started freaking out again, and Marcus just said, "Okay, we need to do something. Maybe set a trap or something." So we went over numerous ideas, everything you could think of, from cameras to baiting him, and we settled on the idea of staying up during the night and locking him in the room. We filled the bed up with pillows, set up cameras. And even barred the windows in the room. We head in the room next to the door. After a few hours had passed, we heard the lock rattling on the front. I hope after a few hours have passed, you're on your knees. I know that shit. Unless you got Adidas, I, I got stuck. Unless you got Adidas knees, you can't be doing it. Work. And we knew it was game time. We left the door just slightly ajar so we could see outside as he went past and the moment he went into the room, we both sprung to action as quickly as possible. We closed the door and locked it from the outside using a chair and metal bar. There was oh, only shit. one way he was getting out. He'd have to destroy the door. We could see the silhouette of him as he paced the room quietly. It was creepy. We called the police as we kept an eye on him. At last, I thought I could finish this and move on with my life. Just as the police arrived, we noticed this guy take a gun out, place it to his head. Then he held up a sign which read, I love you. 
and he pulled the trigger. The police barged in, guns drawn, and told us both to get on the floor. We complied and shouted out that he's in there, pointing at the door. The police removed the makeshift lock and entered the room, called for an ambulance, and put me and Marcus in the back of the police car. I sat in the interview room for a good couple of hours. I guess while they carried out the investigation, when a detective came in and sat down in front of me, opening a folder, placing pictures on the table. Do you know her? Her. Her. I said, looking at the pictures, and I told him no. He looked at me and said, This is the person who's been stalking you. And he then began to tell me that they visited her room and found a shrine with photos of me all over the place, from restaurants to the gym and even shopping. He went on to tell me that she'd been the one that sent the messages, made the phone calls, etc. They also found a diary which had some kind of future plans for me and her. She wanted me to be her husband, and we'd been chatting for around a year and a half. After I explained everything, the detective said I was lucky to be alive. She had actually planned to drug me and kidnap me. She had even had some makeshift lock bed so I wouldn't be able to escape. To this day, I feel lucky and I haven't been on a dark web ever since. I knew it. I knew it. I knew he was on a dark web. You know, you don't have to necessarily, at this point, you don't necessarily have to say dark web for me to know it. To know that you own it. He said he created a site. He's not the one that created the dark web, right? It's, but is he the one that created something on the... I don't know how to explain it. But... That's what, you, that's what your ass get. You should have got clocked up even more. When I was 21, I transferred to a college in San Francisco. I checked out a room for rent on Craigslist. It was in a really nice two-bedroom apartment. It was cheap rent and close to campus, so it was the ideal spot. The girl who lived there was 29, and her name was Beth. She was tall and pretty big, I mean wide, and she had this jet black hair and wore pale makeup. She seemed nice, although a little quiet, but she seemed to like me and agreed to let me move in. So far, so good. My first night there, we went out for pizza. And that's when I could tell that something was a little bit off with her. Throughout dinner, she kept telling me how I looked like Shia LaBeouf. It's this, all right, I think I heard this story before. But you lost me at Jet Black Hair. If, you know, if I was to do like, if I was like, single and I was like you know either either on dating apps which would never happen or speed dating or just even at work and my co-worker has jet black hair that's a big ass red flag I didn't know what to say so I just shrugged it off with a thanks I mean I look nothing like Shia LaBeouf so it just didn't make any sense to me when we got back home, she asked if I wanted to see her room. I said no. So she took me to see it anyway. Her walls were covered in posters of Shia LaBeouf. She even had printed out photos of him all over her mirror. She owned all of his movies also. I didn't know what to make of it. Honestly, it was creepy. The whole night she had been saying I looked just like him. And now it's obvious to me that she's obsessed with the guy. So a few weeks passed and I never really saw her that much. We didn't spend any time together, really. She would come home from work and practically run to her room. She would spend the whole night in there. She had this creepy high-pitched jingle and I would hear her giggling through the walls all night. I wonder what the hell she could be possibly doing in there. Occasionally, she would come out and talk to me for about two minutes. She would always be slurring her words, so I suspected she was drinking a lot. Sometimes she wouldn't say anything. She would just stand in the hallway and watch me in the living room. Oh my God. Standing still, not yes. saying a word. Yeah. I would turn and see her and be surprised and say, hello, Beth. And then there would be this long, awkward pause. And she would give out this creepy, high-pitched giggle. 
It was very uncomfortable being around her. She gave me the chills. So one night I woke up at around 2 a.m. because I heard what sounded like the front door being unlocked. I came out of my bedroom and all of the lights were off. I came out of my bedroom and all of the lights were off, but I could still see Beth standing at the front door. She had her face against it. And she was turning the lock back and forth over and over again. And every time she turned the boat, she mumbled my name, Max Barker, Max Barker, Max Barker. Seeing her standing in the dark and mumbling my name really freaked me out. And it doesn't help that she kind of looks like a bigger version of the girl from the ring. I just quietly went back to my room, but as I did it, I walked backwards. I got in my room and I just tried to... Yo, at like what point do you just say club all this shit and run a run ass? Run ass. What the hell? Haul ass. Like, at what point do you do, do you do that? Cause if you're still with her, and if you're still in the same presence of, as her, and you gotta walk backwards, you gotta walk backwards while also keeping your eye on her. That's a big ass problem. You can't go to sleep at that point. Sleep. One night I was watching Gladiator and she stumbled out of her room and turned the living room light on, forcing me to pause the movie, which was annoying. She then asked me if I wanted to hear about her ex-boyfriend. No! It was an uneasy segue into this topic, but I just said sure and then awkwardly sat back and I listened to her. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I would have said no, no. You clunk ass. Dumb ass, scary, sus ass, weird ass. Jesus. But I feel like after I would have said that, that would have been the last thing I said. A minutes into her story, she was so riled up. She was screaming at the top of her lungs about their breakup. I was worried that the neighbors were going to call the cops. She wasn't listening to me when I asked her to just lower the volume. Amidst all of her screaming, one thing she said that freaked me out, she was in such a fit and yelled, I slit his fucking throat. That was a big game changer for me. Suddenly I had no idea what this girl was capable of. She was practically a stranger. Everything I had seen was becoming alarmingly disturbing. After a few more minutes, she told me thanks for listening, and she started doing her giggle. So you just gonna hit her, and, and we just not gonna talk about that? <laughs> okay. I got out of there pretty fast, and went to my room to go to sleep. I had a pretty unsettled feeling about being in this house with her. No shit! And what's worse is, there was no lock on my bedroom door. I pushed the edge of my dresser in front of it, to act as a little barricade. I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of my dresser scraping against the floor. Beth was pushing my door open. I turned on my light, shouting at her to stop. The thing is, I could see her through the opening of the door. She was so drunk and had this insane look in her eyes. I pushed the door closed and yelled at her to go to bed. I could hear her walk back to her room, but I couldn't fall back asleep. The next morning, when I went out into the hallway, my heart dropped. I saw one of her steak knives was on the floor by the door. I got goosebumps all over my arms. All I could think about was her saying that she would slit this guy's throat. I confronted her about it and she had said she didn't remember trying to push my door open. She said she didn't even remember telling me about her ex. At that point I had enough. My lease was- You just now leaving? No, it's a stay. Stay. Marry that mother clucker. Have kids with the mother clucker. Die with that mother clucker. It's too late to run now, you ass. With the month, so I found a new spot and I moved out. About a month after I moved out, she contacted me. I was at the movies and my phone was off. When I got out, I turned my phone on and to my shock, I received 40 plus text messages that she had sent me over the past two hours. They were all just insane texts that ranged from everything between hi, how are you to I fucking hate you. It was insane. I didn't respond and I never heard from her again. I always wonder if I hadn't set my dresser. You got my boy traumatized like a mother clucker. God damn. For my door. 
where she would quietly come into my room and slit my throat. Yeah. It still freaks me out to this day. I grew up in a neighborhood that would be considered. I'm not even gonna lie. This place is pretty fucked up. So what I'm about to tell you isn't even a surprise. Cause we got crackheads everywhere, abandoned houses take up whole streets, and some of our traffic lights don't even work. We barely have police and don't have any more ambulance. Anyways, when this happened, I was 13 years old. Now I'm 22. So one day I was walking home from school. There's a street near where I live that my mother has always told me to stay away from. Reason being, there's nothing but abandoned buildings on that street, and no one lives on it except for maybe homeless people and crackheads. So one day I took that way home. I remember thinking how eerie the street was. Literally, no one was on this street except for me, until I made it to the middle of the street. As I'm walking, I kept looking at my phone. Then I looked to my left. And then I looked back at my phone, but then I looked back immediately because I saw a man standing in the doorway of an abandoned apartment building. I stopped immediately and made eye contact with the guy. Why? Why'd you stop? Why you stop? And now you give him eye contact. And I nodded my head at him. But he didn't react, he just stared at me. Then I just took off running. So the next day, I took the same way home. All right, all right, all right. Cause now you playing with your life. Tommy, she playing with her life. I know, man. Shit crazy. But my friend was with me. He was the same age as me, but he looked older. And when we were walking, he said he had to use the bathroom, and he stopped to go pee on the side of a, a vacant house. It he randomly, you know. What's it called? Cons no. What is it called when you... No, not supposedly. It starts with a C, I think. I don't know. He just so happens to have to use the bathroom right now. I call Cap. Stop the Cap. Come on with it. Because where we... Where, where we I don't know why I'm stuttered. Where we were before, you could have peed. They have five-star uh, restrooms. You could have peed. And you got to pee right then and there. But now you wanted to hold it. And now, we in a dark-ass alley. And I told you what happened last night. And now you want to just use... No, nigga. You're not using the bathroom. You're not going away to use the bathroom. You're going to use the bathroom as you're walking with me. Cluck with... No. Nah. Cut no. Nah. Tell me that he'll catch up. So I kept walking and seriously out of nowhere, the guy that I saw yesterday in the doorway of that abandoned building hopped out from behind a tall bush. He said, hey, what's good? I remember you from yesterday. Um, can you help me with something real quick? As he said that, he took a few steps toward where he needed help while motioning me with his hand to come with him. Then he started to walk back. As he's walking back, he's talking to me. And he said, Don't you respect your elder? Shut up. I can't come. And then he stopped mid-sentence and said, Never mind. And he ran away after he came back from behind those bushes. He stopped because my friend was walking back toward me. My friend asked me if I was okay, and I said, Yeah. But that wasn't my last time seeing that man. So one night I was sitting in my backyard close to my porch. And I was watching this open field where this house used to be next to my house. I had the back light off, so you wouldn't even notice me if you looked back there. Oh my God. I could see two people in the field. I could see them, but they couldn't see me because it was nighttime and my lights were off. I was watching these people until they disappeared in the shadows at the far end of the field. Then I heard weird noises. Then what looked like someone being carried. I gasped because the person looked dead. 
When I made that sound, the guy was walking into the lit part of the field, and the man immediately stopped and looked toward my direction. Again, no one could see me over there. And what I noticed, when they appeared in that light, the man carrying the woman was the same man that tried to get me to go with him. I sat still, held my breath. He couldn't see me, and he stood there for about 30 seconds looking around. Then he kept walking, and I ran into the house. I told my mother what I saw, and she said stay out of other people's business. So no yep. Too long after that, a whole area in my neighborhood was surrounded by police, and certain places were taped off. What we found out is that there were three women found in the area. One in the field next to my house, one in the garage by my house, and another one in this dude's apartment. The apartment and garage were rented by this man named Michael Madison. He's also the same guy that I saw. Thinking back, when I was walking on that street, I wonder what he wanted with me. I think maybe he wanted to kill me. Honestly, I feel lucky that I had my friend with me because I could have been his fourth victim. This man came out to be a serial killer. Oh, he shit. looked up to another serial killer named Anthony so well. I'm just glad he never got me. Jesus Christ. I'm a 36-year-old woman, and when I was 26, I went through a life-altering breakup. Oh, yeah. To save you some time from reading so much, I'll just sum it up. It took me about three years to get back into a serious relationship. So about two months after my breakup, some female friends invited me over to this very large, old, and beautiful house that the two of them rented for the 4th of July. When I arrived at the house, they told me that they invited a guy friend who they wanted me to meet. I had seen his picture on one of their MySpace friends list, and I commented that he was cute at some point before, but they promised there was no pressure. I was, after all, mostly still a raw and tragic mess at this point. So the guy friend arrived and we were introduced. While well, he was not as cute as his profile picture. I would have I would have saw him, looked at my friends. Y'all ain't shit. Every last one of y'all, mother cluckers. Y'all ain't shit. And after, after tonight, I'm beating every one of y'all mother cluckers up. On me, on mothers, cluck what you heard. Oh. Y'all thought shit was, this shit is not funny. Hey, no disrespect. But, uh. Nah. It was funny and easy to talk to. Besides, I wasn't looking for anything, so whatever. I then learned that he was quite taken by how gorgeous I was. Oh, yeah? Even though he chose to tell me that he was nervous when he first met me. He said I look like a beast, whatever that means. A what? We hung out that night, and when he asked for my number, I gave it to him because he seemed like a... You look like a what? A... Did he say a beast? I was. Even though he chose to tell me that... was, after all, mostly still a raw and tragic mess at this point. So the guy friend arrived, and we were introduced. While well, he was not as cute as his profile picture. It was funny and easy to talk to. Besides, I wasn't looking for anything, so whatever. I then learned that he was quite taken by how gorgeous I was. Even though he chose to tell me that he was nervous when he first met me. He said I looked like a beast. So what the club does that mean? Oh, fuck. Damn it. Oh, it is open. Okay, I thought it was open. What does that mean? I love the beast. What is it called when you messing around with an animal? Is it bestiality? Ew, man. Whatever that means. We hung out that night, and when he asked for my number, I gave it to him. Jesus. He seemed like a decent enough person. Fast forward two weeks or so. We've talked a little through text and instant messenger and, and have hung out with our group of mutual friends a handful of times. I make it very clear that 
I'm in no state to be in a relationship if he wants to try to take it there. He says he understands, but that he enjoys my company. And I said, fair enough. So one night after we've been out with our group at our usual bars and restaurants, I agreed to go back to his place with him. We hang out and, you know, we do all our adult things. No big deal. The next morning, we're hanging out and chatting a bit before I have to head home. At some point, he says, You know, you're a really heavy sleeper. My... I think I heard it. I, what, what is this? Is this a... um? That saying, what he said, you know, you're a really heavy sleeper. It's like I heard that one before. It's like, is it like... Nightmare Files. Is this like... Animation from different YouTubers that you voiced and then you put it together in a, in a video? Or is this... Because some of this kind of sound familiar. Your reaction is to chuckle, and I agree that I sleep like a dead person. Jesus Christ! I catch something sort of odd in his tone that I can't put my finger on. I say, Wait, what do you mean? He stumbles over his words a little bit. He says, Oh, uh, I just honestly thought you were pretending to be asleep because you were making these little noises like you were enjoying yourself. I felt like someone had poured ice water down my spine and was speechless for a moment before I said, What did you do to me? He blanched at my tone and put... I did react to this. Okay, it's like... Like I thought. He, he put... Okay, got it. He said... Nothing. What the fuck? Ha! What the hell was that? Oh! Why is your tongue so red? Nothing, really. I mean... Once I realized you were really asleep, I thought. He refused to elaborate on that statement, but I felt absolutely sickened. In the months following this, he would text me obsessively, send me messages on MySpace at all hours of the night, MySpace. telling me things like, have fun getting laid, you cunt. Apparently, this all stemmed from his inability to understand why I didn't want to be his girlfriend or see him anymore. He started flirting with my friends in an attempt to make me jealous and he even started trying to chat up the 15 year old sister of my best friend except that his flirtation devolved into him saying that he hated her because she reminded him of me in the end his crazy behavior only stopped when one of my friends who he said was disgusting because she was overweight but she had pretty eyes she responded to him positively to his advances today they're still married as far as I know. I contacted him about five years ago wanting to apologize for any pain that I might have caused him. Bullsh he ended up making inappropriate comments on my Facebook pictures. I don't give a cluck. I don't give a cluck. He's creepy, clucked, and sus. What would you even combine that into one word? What was that? What, that? what, that? what? what would that be? Combining sus, creep, and cut. I don't got time for it. <laughs> in the middle of the night, and picking weird, petty fights with my fiance in the comments. Even though he is married to a psychiatrist, his actions made it abundantly clear that growth and rational behavior still aren't his strong suits. I now live 700 miles away from where I first met him. I moved back to my hometown two years ago. 700 miles is not far. What's far is 6,000 miles. Unfortunately, I learned about a year ago that he now lives in the same state. Thinking about him still makes my skin crawl. I live in fear of him realizing that I'm a relatively short drive away. Hopefully he doesn't find me again. He will. This happened 15 years ago. Right. I was a 23 year old woman at the time and enjoyed playing online games. I find a website with cool looking games and I try a few. This was just a bit before I discovered Facebook. I should warn that some of the sites were, well, rather buggy. 
and safety options weren't always available. To go on any that was unfamiliar carried risk of viruses and malware. One day I was bored, so I decided to find a game site. I typed in the search bar, cool not boring games or shooting games. Among the selection, I saw the words, games of death. I had and have morbid mindset, so. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Go back, call of duty, call, <laughs> call off duty. <laughs> Age of gameplay, you got another one right under there. You can't really see it though, but. You gonna play, you gonna click on Games of Death. That's crazy. I had and have morbid mindset, so I clicked the words. For about a minute, my screen was blank. I couldn't see anything. Suddenly, the screen lit up with the words. Hi there. Wanna see someone die? Click submit button to continue. The words were red and dripped like blood. I almost laughed at how silly the site looked. I just stared at the screen for a moment. When I noticed that the submit button was starting to blink. The words changed becoming, oh, what's wrong, scared? Don't be, it's just a game. Don't be shy. Click the button now, please. With a sigh, I clicked the button. Wow. What I saw looked like a bad cartoon. Three characters crudely drawn. Two were men, the other a woman. The men were drawn like cartoon bank robbers with banded masks and striped black and white shirts. The woman was sitting in a chair and animated to look scared, like exaggerated, over the top, shaking, trembling, and whimpering scared. The man to her left looked over and I swear he was looking at me, smiling. He asked, you wanna see her die? His voice was like the disguised voice of a witness. Two button options appeared on the screen, yes or no. I hesitated, wondering what the hell was going on. The man spoke again, a bit annoyed. Look, you clicked the link. <laughs> you want to see it happen. <laughs> cool already. It's only a game. So click the button. Gulping, I clicked yes. The other man put on a butcher's apron and slid into view. He was at an operating table, complete with tools. The animation that followed hunts me still. He began by using a hacksaw and I could hear the woman screaming. I saw everything. All you I know, it's probably a, like some sort of game or animation, but the voices are probably real. With gurgling noises. I almost laughed, but began to feel uneasy. The animation was gross to say the least. The man tossed aside her head. Then the first man laughed. Wasn't that fun? Wanna see some more? I know you do. Curious, I clicked again, yes. Another animation began. This one featured two men in scuba gear, while another man was wearing a business suit. He was at the edge of a large water tank and his hands tied behind his back. The man on the left held up a sign for me to read. It said, You want to see him die? I hesitantly clicked yes. All right. The suit man was screaming and stared at me, trying to squirm back. Finally, the man holding his ankles gave a hard shove, throwing the victim in with a visible and audible splash. For about 30 seconds, nothing happened. Suddenly, the suit man bobbed to the surface, still screaming hysterically. I barely saw something behind him drag him back in, taking him under the surface. Another minute later, the man resurfaced once again. He stopped screaming, but his arms were gone. They looked like they had been caught in a giant blender. The shoulders just a pair of shredded stumps. Then, it appeared to claim its prey, a gigantic alligator. It clamped onto his right side and hauled him down, never resurfacing. By now, I began to feel really sick. What the hell kind of cartoons were these? It was no longer fun. Now I just wanted to get away from the site. 
The screen changed once more. Now the two men were no longer animated. They were real people. On the floor near them was a woman in the tattered remains of a badly shredded business suit. The voice was still disguised as one said, wasn't that fun to watch? Shut up. The two wanted to see more. <laughs> they got to. Only they got to experience it. Want to experience it? You have one minute to comply. Don't leave the site. And it be taken away our fun. Now, I was actually scared at this point. I realized, to my horror, the animations had been done to cover up the crime in progress. These murders had been pre-recorded. God damn! Silly cartoons had been done to disguise what was actually happening. Three options appeared at this time. One said, yes, I want to experience. Another said, no, I don't want to experience. The last said, I want to meet you. I clicked no. The response was threatening. What's wrong with you? You don't want to have fun? Have an awesome experience? You saw us do what we did, and I choose. And it better be yes this time. Again, I clicked no and exited the site. Something tells me that they got her IP address. Like, they got her rural address and personal information. My heart was pounding for a moment. Bravely, I checked my history page. The site was no longer there. Disappearing without a trace. Thankfully, I never experienced anything bad from going to that site. Not yet. But never explored random sites again. I never told anyone of that experience until now. I wondered for a while, who were those two men? Were they ever caught? And who were their unfortunate victims? How many more did they kill and how many more will they? The more of the story is, only go to websites that you know. But you never know what you'll find if you dig deep enough. I feel like they just plotting and scheming until the right time, the right moment to come and snatch your ass. This happened to my mom and I when I was a kid. It was around the late 80s. I must have been around seven or eight years old at the time. I lived in the Bronx, New York, and I was born and raised. Bronx, New York. Or Bronx, New York. <laughs> My mom told me this story when I was older, though. Back in the 1980s in New York, there was a serial killer on the loose roaming around looking for his victims. He carried a hammer, so they called him Hammer Man. He would attack his victim with a hammer, killing them or severely hurting them. The cops were looking for him, so all of New York were warned about him. This is what my mom told me. We had just left my grandma's house, and it was late around 7 or 8 at night. Y'all walking? Probably later. My mom and I would always take this shortcut through the small park. But that night we were walking, and it was dark and scary. We were walking fast trying to make it home. Now this may sound cliche, but my mother heard some light laughing and some sounds as if, as if there was someone near us. When my mom turned around, she saw a man hiding behind a tree, but she could actually see him even though it was dark. She told me to walk faster. She looked back again and saw the man was behind us, walking at a high speed, trying to catch up to us. But he was laughing for some reason. She said he was holding something in his hand and it looked like a hammer. So right away, she knew it was Hammer Man, and she started to run and shout and scream while holding my hand and dragging me. I was a big seven or eight-year-old, so my mother couldn't carry me. So she actually drugged me, literally. She was dragging me across the ground. I was pretty slow, so she had to do that. She saw a couple, and it was a man and a woman. They were walking ahead of us. She yelled and caught their attention. She was shouting that it was the Hammer Man, He's behind us. The couple turned and they looked behind us, but he had already ran away. My mom told me that if it wasn't for that couple that was walking there that night, that there's no telling what could have happened to us. We could have been his next victim. Now, I know this story sounds crazy and it's short, but this is a true story and now I'm an adult. 
and I've never forgotten about that night. I can't remember if they ever caught him or, or not, but I know I'm lucky and thankful to be here to tell this story. Did it? You don't know if they caught him or not? I mean... On the map, New York doesn't seem that big, but maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. Maybe it's just a lot of places for people to hide. It's just... God. That's scary. Somebody like that, out, out, just out and about? Oh my God. This actually happened to a friend of mine in college over 10 years ago. He was a bit of a computer nerd and frequently visited many sites. For privacy, I'll call him Adam. He was 25 at the time and shared custody of his toddler daughter with his ex-girlfriend. He suddenly saw a flashing banner that said, Single, would you like to meet? Click here and find your match. He naively clicked it. The banner disappeared and was replaced with another message. Congratulations, single, lonely person. Are you a man or a woman? Click either the man or the woman symbol. He clicked the man button. It responded with, do you want to meet a man or a woman? He clicked the woman symbol. Finally, it asked, what's your name? Wanting to remain anonymous, Adam typed, Roger Jamison. The banner suddenly showed an animation of a person shaking their head left and right, as if ashamed or angry. The new banner under the picture read, nice try, but your name is actually Adam Martin. Don't try to fool us. Adam began to get scared and tried to exit the website. To his disbelief, everything was frozen. The mouse refused to move, and he was unable to turn off the- Then get a hammer, get some heavy, and smash that motherfucker! Suddenly, his picture appeared on the site. The animated person holding it like a photograph. Under the picture appeared his address on another banner. Now we have your face and address. We'll be over at your house in 20 minutes. Don't try to hide or call anyone. It's useless. She really wants to meet you. Adam screamed and threw his laptop on the floor. The screen became black. He tried his cell phone but had found it not working. And he had no landline. He then had rushed to get a weapon, choosing a baseball bat. No sooner than he had done that, his doorbell rang. It rang once, then twice. A woman's voice suddenly said, Hello, Adam? I've come to meet you. Open the door, please. But Adam peeked out a window near the door and saw her. She was dressed in a long, dark blue dress that looked like an old prom gown. She had long, dark hair that looked like it needed to be brushed, and strangely thin, ribs visible at the sides. Her eyes had a blank stare and were bloodshot red. Mascara and eyeliner barely covered dark circles and bags under her eyes. She looked like she hadn't slept in weeks. She was wearing dark red lipstick that was smudged over her cheeks. I know you're there, she said in a creepy way. In her left hand was a large meat cleaver, which looked like it had been used already. Oh my God. She began to knock on the door with the cleaver. Come on, open the door. You said you wanted to meet. Open up. Suddenly, a neighbor's dog began to bark loudly, getting her attention. He saw her walk away with a smirking smile. He hid under his kitchen table, finally trying the cell phone again. To his relief, it was working again. But as he began to get in contact with the police, he heard the dog next door let out a loud yelp. Then what sounded like... I was nervous that she might have hurt the dog. I can't get past that. You can hurt me all you want. You can hurt these people all you want. But babies... And, and animals, and specifically dogs. I can't get past that. I can't get, I'm, I'm, nah. 
I gotta cook you up to the max. I can't get past that shit. Someone chopping something. The dog can go in quiet, but the chopping sounds continue. Still talking to the dispatcher. Adam heard someone walk up to his door again, ring the doorbell once, then footsteps ran away. The dispatcher advised him to open the door, and the police would arrive shortly and say a cold word to let him know. The 10 minutes it took for them to arrive felt like an hour. After the police gave a cold word, Adam opened the door and was greeted with a gruesome sight. On the path to the door lay his neighbor's dog, a German Shepherd. It looked bad, barely recognizable. On his back was a message that said, next time I'll meet you. But it's spelled meet as in M-E-A-T. Unfortunately, the woman was never found and the website couldn't be located. Adam ended up giving his neighbor a new dog. Then he moved to another place. Although he did eventually find a girlfriend. The guilt and fear he felt that night weighed heavily on his mind. He told me he'd luckily been smart enough to not open the door for the woman in the prom dress. I was glad he didn't, but I sometimes wonder if anyone was unfortunate enough to open that door for the crazy prom queen with a meat cleaver. I almost don't want to know. This whole situation started when I was a teenager, but I'm in my late 20s now, and I'm a female, by the way. It was one small conversation that I had completely forgotten about until about two years ago. But in the past two-ish years, more things have happened to me that made me really think about that short conversation. I was about 13 and my mom and I had just moved back in with my grandma where my uncle was already living in. At the time, his friend was living with us as well. He was only staying there for a few months and I never knew why, I just knew he was staying there. But when my mom and I moved back, and one day, while a friend was out of the house, my uncle sat me down and told me that he didn't want me to be alone with his friend. Oh, okay. I remember this too. Some of these, I remember it and some of them I don't. Uh, yeah. So it's like, some of these is like he's doing the animation of the voiceover that I needed to call him if I found myself alone with his friend. Only about a week after my mom and I moved in, my uncle kicked his friend out. I was young and didn't think much about the conversation and had completely forgotten about it. About two years ago, my uncle very suddenly, unexpectedly passed away. And after he passed, his friend came back into my grandma's life. I think my grandma kind of missed my uncle's friend as a replacement for my uncle. And at first, everything seemed okay. You know, it was fine. But after a few visits, I started feeling weird around him and I didn't know why. Then I remembered that conversation my uncle had with me. But I tried to move past it because it was over 10 years ago with, that we had that conversation. I really, really wanted to forget. And this guy, he's a married man. He's married to a lovely woman. So I thought maybe things... Oh, okay. I remember this. Because Number Files did this. So this must be the animated version of this. Okay. He made a lot of dumb jokes that I never found funny, but were always harmless. Like, I would come home with a bowl that had snacks in it. And my co-workers and I, we share our snacks with each other. And he would ask where his share was. You know, small stuff like that. Then he made some jokes about what I was wearing. And I felt a little uncomfortable, but I was used to my family making similar jokes, so I brushed it off. Things like, oh, who are you trying to impress going out like that? And you must be fighting off men left and right. You know, and other similar comments. I started to avoid leaving my room at that point and when he would come over. But sometimes interactions with him were unavoidable because he would be here when I was getting home from work or he would come over without warning. Another bit of backstory. I'm engaged to a man who lives in a different country. And, and when I had gone to visit him, I have fallen in love where he lives. On top of that, it's more affordable and overall, much safer for us to live there. So we're working on me moving there with him. Well, I don't tell my uncle's friend anything because he makes me feel uncomfortable, but I know my 
grandma shares everything with him, so he knows about the situation. And he has on more than one occasion asked me why I was moving in. I fell in love with somebody, and that's my fiance. I absolutely love him. So my uncle's friend will always come back with, oh, of course, it's for a boy. And has also made comments along the lines of, oh, I guess you're in love. I just don't understand, but whatever. Like he asked Bobby that I'm engaged in moving away. But again, I would just hide myself away in my room and constantly convince myself that I was reading into things and overreacting. I also knew I couldn't say anything to my grandma about it because my family is one of those, if you don't want the comments, you need to cover up. And I'm not allowed to wear shorts around male family members because what if they look at me and have bad thoughts? That's disturbing. To say, not just around him, but male family members. So it was other guys in the family that was on some such shit like this? That's crazy. You know, it's all my fault. Now, all of these small instances were very uncomfortable, but I just ignored them. Hid in my room and did what I could to avoid situations. And something happened one day and now I just feel icky. I went to work and my co-worker told me how yesterday a man fitting the description to a T of my uncle's friend came into my work in the afternoon after I had already left asking about me. And he knew details like what I looked like, where I lived, even details about my move to another country. And he made comments about being my uncle's friend. Now, I didn't hear any of this as I had already left for the day, but my coworker is a very trustworthy person and doesn't just come up with stuff for the fun of it. She will even be the first one to call someone out on their BS if she catches them in a lie. So I trust that she is telling me the truth. But he was saying, however, since my uncle passed, he has been trying to see me more and more because he just cares so much about me. Uh -oh. He sees me like his daughter. That comment alone weirded me out because I barely interacted with this man and, and I avoided it at all costs. So why does he feel that close to me? He also started talking at length about my move to another country and he wouldn't leave this topic alone. He just kept going on and on about it. He doesn't get how I could just fall in love with someone so far away and how I should just stay here and find someone here to fall in love with and other comments basically about how he doesn't approve of my move and be with my fiance. I didn't tell him where I work, but I know my grandmother tells that guy everything. and It wears me out that he came into my workplace looking for me and then talking at length with my coworkers about my choices in life and my future, how he doesn't like it when I don't converse with him. I just can't wait to get out of this place, out of this house, far, far away from this guy. This happened about 15 years ago. So my buddies and I went fish camping at a pretty remote lake off of a four by four trail about two hours from home. There were four of us and we were all men. Being the smallest was about 195 pounds. That's gonna be important later. The camping spot has great fishing heads. It has a nice deep spot with lots of trout right next to it. But the campground itself is rough. It is on the side of a steep hill with barely enough room for tents and a small fire ring. It is accessible by a rough, steep, winding 100 yard trail from where you park the 4x4 above the camp. We had a great day drinking beers and catching our limits on nice sized trout. After it got dark, we made a small fire and just bullshitted the, the whole night. It was a great time and then suddenly there was someone shining a blinding light in our eyes from about 10 or 20 yards away. We didn't hear this person approach at all person announced themselves as the sheriff. One of my friends asked, are you a Cuyahoga County Sheriff? The stranger didn't respond to the question. Instead, he shined a light in each of our faces and then he said, have a good night. And he just walked off. We sat there dumbfounded, asking each other, what the hell was that? After a minute or two, curiosity eventually got the better of me. 
So I lit up this person with my stupidly powerful flashlight. He was about 50 to 60 yards away at this point, right before a crest and a bend of the trail, right before he was out of sight. We all saw it. It was just some dude in a flannel shirt and jeans. I said, hey man, you're not the sheriff. He must have heard me as you could see him start moving quickly for a second before he was out of our sight. A few moments later, we heard the engine start and that was that. Strange we didn't hear the vehicle earlier, but I attribute that to being drunk and loud. And what makes this scary is, what if it wasn't four big dudes he approached? What if it was a single person or a couple? What was his intentions? What was he about to do? Should we have chased after this person? Debatable. Should we have reported this to the actual sheriff's department? Absolutely, but honestly, we never did. Nothing came up. There was, there, you know, there was a third option. You could have hauled ass and never talked about this shit ever again. That situation, I just always think, what if? My name is Ken, and the other day I was watching videos on YouTube. One of them was why people experience paranormal activity or feel like they live in a haunted house. One of the reasons that people experience things supernatural or paranormal is for a punishment of an action you did or didn't do. I find it interesting because about four years ago, I had a very strange and frightening experience. The job I worked for was changing things around and it asked me to work later. So for a short period of time, I was driving home late night every night. One night when I was driving, it was cold, raining, and I was very tired. I wasn't used to the late nights just yet. As I was driving, I noticed a hitchhiker on the side of the road with his hand out asking for a ride. I never picked up a hitchhiker and didn't plan to then. In my mind, it was too dangerous. So I drove past him. I didn't look back at all. Huh? A few miles down the road, Thank I you. saw another hitchhiker. It was like it was the same person that I drove past, but this time, they weren't holding out their hand. I was having trouble keeping my eyes open, so I stopped at the next gas station I found to get an energy drink. I went inside the gas station, grabbed an energy drink, and sat at the counter waiting for the cashier to come back, wherever he was. As I was waiting, I looked outside and it looked like the hitchhiker was standing in the parking lot looking towards the gas station. At that point, the cashier came to the counter, and when I looked back outside, the hitchhiker was gone. I thought I just needed some sleep. I got in my car and carried on driving home. About five minutes passed when I saw the same hitchhiker standing on the side of the road. I looked in the mirror and briefly saw a man in the back seat watching me. This scared me and made me jump so much I nearly lost control of the car. I stopped the car, got out, and checked the back seat and saw no one. I stood there trying to calm down and catch my breath. After calming down, I got back in my car and continued driving. The whole ride home, I was afraid to look in my mirror. Then no. Even though I didn't see that man again, I still felt him sitting there watching me. I never came up with a logical explanation of what I experienced that night. Before watching that video about paranormal crap, I always thought it was my lack of sleep that caused me to see things. But now I think what I was seeing was that man on the road and in my car with some kind of punishment for not picking him up. Well, that is it. Well, if it's the punishment for not picking up hitchhikers and vice versa, well, shit. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna get punished for all of eternity. So that's, that's just the way it is. I don't care who you are. I don't care how many of you it is. I don't care if it's a family. I don't care if any, I don't care about none of that. No matter who, like what, like I don't care, nothing, nothing, nothing. You can literally be on the side of the road 
I see you, you see me jump out in front of my car, the chances of me running you over is, is um, you know, it's about a 99.99% chance of me running you over. I have to protect myself. And right now, I feel endangered. I say that right? I feel scared. I feel like I'll do something. So naturally, I would run you over back and forth. I would run you over, reverse, back, reverse, back, about 10 times. Nothing excessive, though. But, you know. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.